Okay, great. We, I know it's late in the afternoon. People were having a lot of discussions about food, but we've got two really good presentations left. Um, so we're joined by Kelly O'Brien from our studio. We'll be talking about workflows, which I think is kind of a, an underestimated area. So I'm really excited to see what you have to say about how to build the perfect perfect workflow. If you have any questions, use the Ask Question box. Um, and I'll hand it over to you, Kelly. Thank you. Thanks. Cool. So I'm really excited to, to talk to you about some workflows today. Uh, they are going to be specific to one of our commercial products here at our studio uh, called our Studio Connect. Um, so I hope that the things that I'm going to talk about today will be interesting to folks who might not have our Studio Connect available to you because you can start to think about how to make your workflows and your data delivery systems more mature. But for those of you who do have our Studio Connect, you're going to learn uh, some of the new things that we're going to have in our next release, as well as things that you might not know already exist in the product today. So. Uh, I'm hoping this will be interesting and exciting to you. I'm going to try to do uh, a live demo I've never done before. So that'll be uh, fun as well. And then we can all have a good time here. Uh, I'm the product manager for our Studio Connect. Uh, and uh, I got here to do product management at our studio by way of being a solutions engineer. So as a solutions engineer, I spent a lot of time talking to different organizations, and I still do in my capacity as a product manager as well, uh, who are at different stages of our production maturity. There are some organizations that are still really trying to get R legitimized as a recognized standard inside of their org. They're trying to work with IT, upgrade them, tell them that R isn't a scary, hard thing to manage. And that can come with a lot of challenges that the R Studio Solutions Engineering team works really hard uh, to help you out with. As you move forward through your maturity and making R more of an accepted uh, standard at your org, uh, you'll need to understand R and manage the tooling around it. We'll do some investments in learning how to do some of these best practices, some of which I'm going to talk about today. And finally, hopefully, uh, our goal is to move as many folks who we interact with all the way to the end of the spectrum where R is, is integrated inside of your org and, and works with other systems, like some of which uh, James was speaking to in the previous presentation. And you get to extend your domain and really have a lot of influence as a data scientist uh, using R uh, in, inside of your org. So that's the goal uh, at a high level, but there are a number of ways that our Studio Connect can help uh, you achieve that. So the R Studio Connect vision is essentially at its core to help you move data science off of your local laptop and into a place where it can be used by other people, other stakeholders, your team members, your future self to drive better decision making. And our Studio Connect itself is a platform for publishing the data science artifacts that come out of your data science process. So there are a number of ways you might have seen today to publish something, and a data science artifact like a Plumber API, and our Markdown document, Shiny application, or even Python content to the Connect platform via push button publishing, get back to publishing. And then what I'm going to talk about today is a third set of publishing tools called the RStudio Connect API. Now, these tools uh, kind of range, like I showed in the original diagram, um, across uh, levels of process maturity. So on the left-hand side here, we have push button publishing which is really great because it provides the lowest barrier of entry to our developers who just want to do exactly that, like get things off of their local machine and into a place where they can be viewed by stakeholders. It gives our developers full control over when assets are published, where they go, and, and how to manage them. On the other side of the spectrum, we have the RStudio Connect API. Uh, it's more sophisticated and customizable. 
Uh, but it's essentially a way to do the same thing as push button publishing, to bundle up that asset and send it to the place where you want it to live. As opposed to push button publishing, the API systems are more likely to meet your IT and security requirements. Some IT groups are going to have a really like visceral anti-reaction to you pushing a button to send something over to a connect server, which in their mind exists in a production environment. And so that's why we created these APIs because we want to have a system for our developers to work closely with their IT groups who want control over publishing to production, but want to be able to script those deployment actions in code, just like you do, your reproducible code. And we want to do it in a way that there is the, the minimal amount of inner team communication as possible as part of your daily work. Because while communication between teams is great and often really a, a healthy sign inside of organizations, having to do it all the time is too much of a lift. So these APIs exist and the patterns and resources exist that we'll provide uh, to lower that barrier of entry to the IT teams when they're uh, interacting with these APIs. So what does it mean uh, when I'm talking about like a really sophisticated deployment process? I'm gonna give you a, an example of a scenario here. So you have, you're on a team, you're collaborating on an application, a shiny application, or any piece of content really that comes out of a data science pro process. And every two weeks, you want to share that code with your stakeholders. So the code changes over the course of two weeks, you're tracking it in Git, you are creating GitHub issues for your project. The team um, produces that update at the end of each sprint by merging their development branch into the main branch. Your organization itself may not permit data scientists to push directly to the production server, like I mentioned. So production updates are like scheduled events, they're gated, um, they have to incorporate successful user testing to be merged into that main branch. And then once that happens, a deployment engineer who is probably not an R user, uh, uses scripts to create and publish content into production by interacting with Connect Server APIs. So the organization policies state that each release needs to trigger the creation of a brand new, uniquely named Shiny application. But there can't be any disruption to the stakeholders themselves. They can't know that the application itself is a new version, only that the content is updating. So the deployment needs to exist at the same URL as the previous one, and it has to be shared with the same set of stakeholders. So this is essentially what all of that means, what I'm trying to build. From the RStudio IDE, I want to be able to push changes to my application to a GitHub repository. And then from there, a deployment engineer is going to set up the, the deployment pipeline of their choosing. Today, I want to do a demo of how to set up a pipeline from like nuts to bolts in Azure DevOps. None of these APIs are Azure DevOps. Uh, exclusive or specific to Azure DevOps. I was just interested in playing around with Azure DevOps pipelines. So that's what I'm going to showcase today. Finally, that pipeline is going to be the force that has the scripts, that executes them, that lands that content in, onto your RStudio Connect server. And from there, we're going to take additional steps to update the URL and then share it with those same stakeholders and tag that piece of content. So let's see how far I can get uh, through this demo here. Full disclosure, I'm going to be showing uh, some new API endpoints that have not been released yet, but will be coming in the next version of our Studio Connect 186. So you are seeing the first preview of what we'll be releasing uh, again there. Uh, okay, so let's see how far I can get. I'm going to start a new Shiny project. So in this scenario, I'm starting out as the R developer. So let's see. Oh, new directory, Shiny application. I'm going to call it Azure Shiny 5000. Create a project.
So I have this new Shiny application. It's our standard uh, Shiny geyser histogram application here. Let's come up and then you can see it running. Yes, standard application. And the first thing I'm going to do here is set up uh, a GitHub repository for my app. So I'm gonna switch over the terminal because that's my preferred way of interacting with Git. So I'll say git status. Uh, I've got these new files because I initiated the project as a Git project. So I'll say git add all of those git git first. All right. And then what I want to do is create a new repository. So I'll call this again Azure Shiny 1000. I'm going to make it public here. I'll create this repository. Um, and I'm doing this in my own GitHub account. So I'm going to copy uh, this push an existing repository from command line code chunk here, then go back to our studio IDE in the terminal. I'll paste that in and link those repositories. And then I'll say git push. OK, so now come over here. I've got all of my repository set up. Cool. So. Now that my repository is set up, I can link it to Azure DevOps. So I already have an Azure DevOps account set up with like this organization it's set up for me. And I've started a project called Shiny Deployment Pipelines here. So when I open up my project, I can go to the pipelines function here and say, I wanna create a pipeline. And the first question I have to answer is where my code is. Oh, this is this is a really easy one because I know that it's in GitHub. And so it'll say Azure. Da, da, da. I will pick the repository I just created. And it's going to ask me for some permissions here. I'll say yes. Send that into my account. And now it's going to ask me how I want to start setting up the pipeline. So I'll set start with this starter pipeline, which gives you a little bit of framework code here uh, to get started. So now if I if I ran this, it would uh, trigger off of changes to the master branch uh, in my GitHub repository. It would spin up this Ubuntu latest image and then execute these steps. And these steps are what I want to turn into the Connect API execution steps that will take the content in my GitHub repository, bundle it up, and send it over to the Connect server. So let's see how to do that. The best place to learn how to do anything with the RStudio Connect server APIs is to start with the server API cookbook. So this is a resource that we have available uh, currently in all existing versions of Connect and will be updated for the newest uh, 186 release. And within this uh, cookbook resource, there are uh, methods and, and script samples for how to go about deploying content. Uh, the most important thing here to understand is the actual workflow that you need to go about uh, and the order of operations you need to take for setting up a content item and then transmitting the bundle and unpacking it. So the steps are that you have to create a new content item on the server. Uh, you have to create a bundle for capturing your code and its dependencies. You have to upload that bundle to connect. And then optionally, at this stage, you can set up your environment variables using other API endpoints. Uh, you want to deploy that bundle, activate it, uh, and then you can go about pulling uh, that deployment task until it's complete to see the status of it. So that does, sounds like a lot <laughs> to accomplish here, but we also have what is really nice, some cheats for you to explore as well. 
So here are some examples of bash scripts that one of our engineers put together uh, two years ago for the initial release of the uh, experimental deployment APIs. And these have been updated as well to, uh, to reflect the fact that with 186, we're going to be making these APIs for deployment v1 public. So that's big news here. Uh, so using these scripts, um, we can take a pattern from a bash script here for doing all of those steps that I just talked about, um, creating the content item, creating the bundle, uploading that bundle, and deploying it. And all of this has been sort of framed out in this nice bash script here that we can scrape off and then use in the repo we just created. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna do a little bit of cheat magic here um, because I made some changes to this file and I'll talk about those changes, but I'm gonna scrape that off of a repo that I already have in existence here and then add it to my project. So let me go over to my other repo and copy this file that I'm showing, updated. And then what I'm going to do is go back to our studio, and I'm going to create a, a new deployment script. Uh, touch, let's see, call it create, upload, deploy. Touch. All right, now that I have this, I can paste in that script I was showing. And uh, I'll show you the change the, that I made that we need to talk about first. So the first thing that I want to do is make sure that this app.r gets bundled up with its associated manifest file. So in order to do that really nicely, I'm going to create a content directory and then pass in the information about the path to that content directory. So that's the, the first big change I made to this file. So here I'm going to, uh, let's see, create a new directory. I'm gonna call it after. And then I want to move this app.r file into after. The other thing I'm gonna need uh, is a manifest file. So I am going to also hop back over in here into the console and then open after and then set it as my working directory. And then to create the manifest that uh, will describe the version of R that I use to produce this app and the packages, I'm gonna say RS connect, write manifest. And this just takes a couple seconds to execute because it's determining that information that I specified about the version of R and the packages. And it's gonna write up that manifest file so that when I unbundle uh, this application on connect, it knows that information and, and how to set up the environment so that I can execute the interactive application there. So that is running. Let's see what else I need to set up here. Um, another, oh, I don't know if I can keep going while this is writing the manifest out. The next thing I will do though, is also a little bit of a change from, uh, here we go, cool. So, the next thing I'm going to do is to touch a, uh, let's see what I called that, cookies. Um, Cookie.txt file. And this is a little bit of a hack for interacting with the, uh, the API that's going to be doing the task polling operation. 
Um, and the reason I need the, this cookie file is because I need to scrape the cookies that I'm using um, to do the task polling because the connect instance that I've been using is uh, in an HA configuration. So there are multiple nodes and I need to know which node the actual deployment task is is occurring on and if i don't know which node if i don't pass in that cookie information to the api request uh, it will it might not request this, the, the information from the correct node which would break uh, my script here so that's an important piece as well okay so yes we close that so now uh my directory looks a little like this. I have a deployment script. I have this cookie.txt. I've created uh, an application directory to hold my app.r file and my manifest JSON. So I'm going to commit all of that to version control. Uh, get add, get commit. Uh, I'll just call all of this deployment script. All right, and then get push. Okay, so all of that happened here in our Studio IDE and in, in my Git repo. So let's go back and make sure the Git repo looks correct here. Yep, and now we can go back to this pipeline step again. So remember we had started to set up uh, a Git pipeline um, and now we're going to try and finish up this pipeline and run it for the first time. So let's look at what we have here. I want to scrape all of this standard stuff out. And remember, we have a bash script that we want to run. So uh, this pipelines actually has little templates for um, setting up um, different types of scripts uh, for execution here inside the pipelines. So the script path is at the root of the directory and we called it, uh, let's see again, create and upload dot sh. So I'll pull this over here. And then let's see, I think we're going to have to need, we're going to uh, put in an argument for um, the content title. So this is the title that will be the application um, when it lands on Connect. So I think I'll just start with a base title called, uh, let's see, um, NHSR content. Okay, so I'll add this here and it pre-fills all of these steps here, which is really nice. And then the other thing that I want to do um, before I set this up is to establish some variables. So you'll know that uh, if you're familiar with using our APIs that uh, you'll need to set up an API key and the server URL. So we're actually going to do that globally here in the variables pane, but there are two variables that I need to pass in um, to make the script work itself. One is let me just go ahead and copy this since I'm running low on time. Uh, the content directory that I set up, and this is what I named apter. And then the second part of this is, uh, is what I want the vanity URL to be set at. So like, let's set this to Azure App NHS. Okay, so that is essentially all I need for my pipeline YAML script here. I will set up the variables now. So this one will need to be uh, called, let's look here, connect server. And the value will be the name of this, my target server. So save that. And then I also need my connect API key. I'll set up a new one for that. And um, to provide some semblance of security here, I'll enter that uh, 
over here on the side so that you are all are not seeing that. Okay. All right, so I set up the API key and the server. And the last piece, which is kind of interesting here, is that the trigger is set to master, but recently um, GitHub switched uh, their branch should be called main. And so I'm gonna set up the trigger so that any uh, new change that lands on main uh, will trigger this pipeline to run. So let's see what happens here. I have going to save this out, run it. And when uh, I'm executing this, this is actually creating a new Azure pipelines.yaml file that will live inside that repo. So this is triggering the job to start up, um, but you'll see here, if I come over to my repo, I knew, now have a new file, Azure Pipeline YAML, that'll live inside this repo. So let's look at what the job is doing. It's gonna start up that uh, Ubuntu image here to run all of my bash scripts inside of. This is it. Uh, it went a little bit too fast. So what happened was it created the bundle for my content application. Um, and then it started a deployment task. This is all of the polling data that you get back from pulling those tasks. And then the last piece was that it updated the vanity URL to say Azure App NHS. Uh, and so let's go see if in fact, I have a content item called uh, what? We called it. Uh, let's see. Refreshing my. Cool. So here's my Connect server, and here's the content item that I just deployed. Here we go. So you'll see here that this is the application that we put together, and here's the content URL. So if I copy this, I can go to uh, the open solo mode, uh, and now any application that I create, uh, any change that I create to the main branch of my GitHub repo will trigger a new application to be created on my Connect server, uh, and it will point uh, to this vanity URL. So updating from one content item to the next so that all of my stakeholders always find the correct application that I want them to see in the production environment. Cool, so uh, that was about all I wanted to show. I think the coolest part here is to, to actually show a change um, to some piece of uh, the application here so that you can know that uh, the pipeline will be re-triggered. So NHS, fun demo. So if I update the title of my application here, in the code, and then I commit that change. And get commit and title, uh, get push. Oh, I probably have to pull first. Quit, okay, get push. All right, so now, now let's see. Oh wait, so I have that title commit landed here on my repo and let's see what happens with the pipeline. So it's kicked off a new deployment here. Let's watch the job go. Nice, okay, and then back to my connect. Oop, not, not this connect, the other connect. There we go. So now what I should see here is here's my first application. Here's a brand new one, updated timestamp with the correct vanity URL assigned and the new title. So there we go, very exciting. Uh, looks like I am uh, running up on the time here, so uh, happy to take any questions or to uh, talk more about this. If you're an R user, especially, who's interested in anything like this, deployments, uh, thinking about 
um, making your deployment pipelines more mature, your workflows more mature in, in general, or more sophisticated or more complex, please reach out to the solutions engineering team at our studio. We love to talk to you about this stuff. We have some uh, resources here and be on the lookout for the announcement of our Studio Connect 186, which is coming soon. And we'll have all of these uh, V1 public APIs available to you. Thanks. Thank you. That was some very impressive live coding. I think everyone is in awe in the, in the comments. That was very, uh, very cool. Um, I don't think we have any questions, so I'm going to move us on to the next session. But thank you very much for showing us that. And um, I'm sure people will be in contact with the um, uh, Connect team at some point. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you.